It's Jill on Element FM, and I'm joined by a very special guest today, both a friend and a colleague of mine at Element for Element FM's Red Music Fridays. He's an award-winning Anishinaabe hip-hop electronic artist, youth advocate, motivational speaker, and of course, Element's own host of The Beat. It's Cody Coyote. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Ani, hello. <laughs> It's always a pleasure and it's it's always nice to kind of look at all the different things you're doing and just be so amazed by it so thank you for all you do <laughs> you're awesome oh, much. <laughs> now speaking of which you've got a new hip-hop track out it's called revolution which we're going to be premiering very soon here on element right after our chat but i wanted to hear from you what does this track sort of mean to you where did it come from for you it's a, it's a special track especially like where things are right now in the world like there's been a tremendous and huge milestone for for BIPOC voices, you know, where we let's look at things that uh, you know transpired in the '60s and then the '70s and the '80s and the '90s, right? With Black and Indigenous folks, now we're in a time where we're we're very much standing in solidarity with each other, you know, even further, and uh, we're starting to recognize that there's parallels in our experiences in so-called Canada and uh, so-called the United States of America. Um, so this song, like it's, it's really given a voice to those who have been oppressed by the colonial regime and uh, speaking out against that, you know, like really talking about things like how important it is to, to amplify the voices of BIPOC people. These governments have not been, uh, been doing a good job at taking care of uh, marginalized people and um, people act as if, you know, this is something of the past, you know, particularly for indigenous people, but it's very much happening today. And uh, whether that looks like the RCMP coming into uh, traditional indigenous territories and, and meeting them with violence or whether it's like, uh, the Canadian government forcibly taking Indigenous children and putting them into the, the foster care system, the child welfare system. There's these different things that are happening behind the scenes that the average quote unquote Canadian doesn't see. So this song, like, to sum things up, it, it comes from a very uh, real place. And I want people to understand that we're, we're still here and we're not going anywhere. Now, I think a big theme that you address in this song is how non-Indigenous and non-Black folks can be better allies. Allyship seems to be a huge theme here. And you actually lay out quite a few different ways that people can get involved. Would you like to touch on some of the things that you think people should be doing right now to make a difference? Yeah, like, it, you know, like, this is like outside the song, but I think people need to mobilize. They need to do it actively, you know? Stop living in that, 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 that privileged world of, oh, well, this makes me feel uncomfortable, so I'm going to ignore it. Newsflash, we don't get to ignore it. You know, as Indigenous people, um, I can't speak for Black folks, right? But I know that as an Indigenous person, every day of my life, you know, I'm fighting. And that's the unfortunate side, right? Even if we look at the, the most recent news, um, a lot of people are saying it's a discovery, right? For the 215 indigenous children that were found in Kamloops. But that was a confirmation. That's a confirmation of something that us as indigenous people have grown up knowing. Uh, we, we know that the number of children that died at uh, Canadian residential schools far surpasses uh, the number of 6,000, which was estimated by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. So when I think about this stuff, right and uh and allies people need to really dive deep into what it means to identify as a so-called canadian and the privileges that come with that right to really like tuck in the the so so-called pride that they have put that off to the side because identifying as a canadian is oppressive celebrating things like canada day is oppressive right so if people are going to be mindful about how to be a better ally it's listening. It's like, like, stop talking, listen, use the resources that are out there, right? Do the research, actually care to do the research. You know, that's, that's the biggest part is actually caring to, to, to make an effort 
to go out there and to, to listen to the voices and to the stories and the experiences of BIPOC folks, you know, but really, uh, really focusing on amplifying their voices, I think is, is a good way to, to sum all that up. Right. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, there are so many different resources out there, as you mentioned, like it's really not that hard to find. Of course, there's the truth and reconciliation findings. There's so many documentaries. There's so many books that people can turn to at this time. And, you know, it is shocking to me that people don't know about the residential school system. And how do you feel about that? Do you find that that's kind of shocking for you as well? That's like the epitome of privilege, right? So people, they, they often come into it with this ideology of, oh, well, you know, that, that wasn't me. That wasn't me, you know? Well, actually, it was your ancestors, right, who did it. Your ancestors came over here. They arrived here. How did you come here, right? People who identify as Canadian, you know, and uh, that are of European settler descent, they're like brainwashed into thinking that they're from here. They're not from here, right? I'm mm -hmm. Anishinaabe. My nation has been here for over 33,000 years and we're still here, right? You look at how old Canada is. I think it's like 154 years old. That's not very long, right? But that's how long, you know, European Southern folks have been here and the next generation has been here. So I think it's their responsibility to hold themselves accountable for the, the things that they have benefited from based on things like the residential school system. So they're acting surprised. Oh, I never knew about this. And no, 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 That's a privilege. Because growing up as an Indigenous person, right? I've known about this for most of my life. And here I am at 29 and finding out the layers on how this system has directly impacted my family hurts, right? It hurts and it cuts deep, but it also puts things into understanding and uh, I'm not gonna be quiet about it, right? And I encourage non-Indigenous folks to not be quiet either. Like they need to start speaking up. They need to start doing the research. They need to start learning, right? Because it's like I've said, this isn't something of the past. This is ongoing. This is ongoing, right? They're taking Indigenous children still. The child welfare system is the new residential school system. And um, I strongly encourage people who are non-Indigenous to really reflect on the privileges that they have clean drinking water, right? Clean drinking water is a huge one. Being able to, to be with their families, you know, a lot of the time. Uh, we look in the employment, you know, things like this, different things that are just coming off the top of my head, but really reflecting on the fact that they can walk outside and not have to worry about things like uh, being attacked or being picked up by uh, a police force and taking on what they call a starlight tour, right? And being left for dead. Like these are very real experiences that indigenous people face. Yeah, you've touched on a lot of, of great things here. And I think the, mm -hmm. the biggest one for me is that, you know, as a white person myself and as a non-indigenous white people, especially, we take for granted a lot of things that indigenous people don't get to have or have to go through that are not in our realities at all. And I think it's on myself and the community of non-Indigenous white folks specifically to get out there and, you know, call your MP, read the resources, watch the documentaries, listen, do as much as you can to, to listen to Indigenous people's voices. And you've, you've spoken greatly about Indigenous voices. And one thing that really stuck out to me that you said recently was take a walk in my moccasins. And I think mm -hmm. that's a very good way of summing up everything you've just said. And I think a lot of people should really, really take from that right now at this time. Definitely. You know, and like, I appreciate that you're woke. You know what I'm saying? Like you're one of the good ones <laughs> on, on, on some real stuff, you know, because like even like I, I remember like being interviewed by some folks and I'm just like, oh, my goodness, you know, and um, it's kind of hard being in a position even with that, like where there's like the ignorance that's present when you're, you're, you're in that interview. You know, that's a, a very real and awkward experience that a lot of us face, you know, so I just want to say me much really quick for that, you know. Yeah, thank you. And you know what, Cody, like, I, I can't, I have to be transparent here. Like, I didn't always know these things. And, you know, l working in an Indigenous radio station, I have learned a lot in my time. And I was ignorant to a lot of stuff uh, until the last few years. So, you know, it is a, it's a learning journey. But I hope that future interviewers, knowing everything that's coming out right now, will have 
some more respect for your experience and, and come in, you know, geared with the right information. Cause that is, that's really hard. So, and I have to say, thank you because you are doing the most you're coming out, you're educating people. Uh, you're talking to everybody about what's gone on and that's not an easy thing to do. You face some real, real tough intergenerational traumatic experiences very recently. And we don't have to get into it unless you would like to, to chat about what you went through but I do have to commend you for sharing your story. Yeah, we, we can talk about it too. You know, like, I think it's, it's important for people to hear that because um, you know, part of the privilege is that they don't experience that. They don't experience that, you know, and uh, they might have their own intergenerational trauma, but it doesn't stem from, uh, from genocide. Right. Let's, let's call it the elephant in the room, right? The Canadian government has tried to cover this up time and time again, but now the United Nations know, now it's out there. Truth is finally out, you know? Canada committed acts of genocide and they still are committing acts of genocide towards indigenous people whose homelands they invaded and they reside on. The big part about how this has affected me here I am at 29 years old. I met my family for the first time when I was 25. My father was a part of the 60s scoop. Um, we found out that my grandmother was taken away to uh, the Spanish residential schools. Uh, she went to St. Joseph's schools, uh, sorry, the St. Joseph school for girls. And uh, my great uncle and several of my cousins were also taken away. And um, he was taken to St. Peter's, which was the boys school that was in Spanish. And um, as of recent too, you know, speaking with, uh, with my great auntie, you know, learning that, um, that next generation of, of, of parents were, were taken there, right? My great grandparents were taken to residential school. The Canadian government literally tore apart my community, tore apart my family, and I'm very angry. And people need to understand that that anger is so valid. I often tell people to, to look within, you know, think about their room, think about their household, think about all these belongings that are precious to them, think about the things that they love and that they cherish. And then picture somebody showing up uninvited to their household, right, in their space, walking right in, taking everything and leaving them with nothing. Putting that visual out there. That's how I felt growing up. They took away my culture. They took away my language. They took away my family. You know, they took it all away. And now I'm in this place where I'm reclaiming it and I'm taking it back. But the important thing that everybody needs to hear is guess what? The Canadian government did not succeed. Not with my family. You know, we found each other. Right. And the one thing that I know about Indigenous folks is that when we mobilize, when we use our voices, when we come together, we're a force to be reckoned with. And I, I encourage people like, coming from my heart to, to anybody, you know, who's willing to listen, take the time to look within, take the time to reflect, take the time to, to get out there and actively make change and immobilize. Because we don't get to sleep on this. We don't get the pause, right? This is a part of our everyday life. And uh, again, coming back to what you had said, you know, take a walk in our moccasins, take a walk in my moccasins, reflect on that. For sure. Thank you, Cody. Thank you for sharing. And I just, I have so much respect and so much, sending so much love your way to take the journey to rediscover your, your lineage, your family, and to reconnect like that is a hard thing to do. And I'm just so happy that you were able to find your family. That's incredible. And again, it just speaks to the resiliency of indigenous people. So thank you for sharing that story. I know that it can be hard to to kind of go up and, and talk about these these things. So thank you. Uh -huh. you got you. And if you need a pump up song for those listening who are going to mobilize, I think Revolution is the perfect one to do so. It's got so many different ideas for things you can do. And it's just, it's it's a great track. It's fire, it's fire. Oh. Sorry, not to change the subject too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's good day fire it's good day yeah <laughs> yeah like you can feel the passion like running through that song i'm I, I love it so much now you actually have another song in the works and this one is for indigenous people especially like anybody who's hurting right now in if with all the news that's been discovered that's called helpless you want to chat a little bit about that as well 
Yeah, let's let's touch base on it. Um, so first and foremost, the release date, it's right before so-called Canada Day. Because I want people to to really acknowledge things, you know, to really acknowledge things. Um I wrote this, you know, I wrote this like during the time where I, I, I was gonna go to Spanish. I had it in my head, I'm going to Spanish, you know. And um I started thinking about like, like how my grandmother must have felt, how my great uncle must have felt, how my cousin must have felt, right? Because my great uncle and my cousin, they uh, they ran away, not once but twice, from the from the residential school there, and they were brought back both times, right? And I remember, like, standing in this place, hey, eh? looking around. And that, that song became even more real, right? I was going to wait, you know, and release it as a part of uh, the, the project that I'm working on that I'm hoping to have out in September. But now is a crucial time, you know? It was like it was, it was calling to me because I wrote about it and, and talking about that, that feeling of, of being helpless, right? Like really trying to, trying to put myself in the perspective of how my relatives must have felt right? Whether they're forced by the, the Jesuits of English Canada and the Canadian government to stay in these residential schools, stay in this place, you know, where, where there's uh, severe abuse happening, where there's forced assimilation happening and, and several terrors and horrors that I don't want to touch base on right now, you know, but the stories that I carry, right? The stories that I carry, this song is uh, is talking about that, right? And um, I wanted to to also be voiced that we're not uh, we're not victims, we're survivors, right? We're survivors, and part of that, right? Part of that is uh, a lot of us are going to be on a lifelong healing journey, you know. And my hopes with this song is. Uh, that it'll help with that healing process for folks, you know? Cause I know for me, like I listen to like a lot of Metallica. I listen to like a lot of, you know, different styles of music, right? Nas, um, Tupac, like, like things that will help me process, right? Emotions. And obviously Metallica helped me with the anger component of it. You know, the rage that I feel. So I feel angry every day but it's up to me to deal with that anger. You know, with this song, I'm hoping that it can help people, you know, who are, who are processing what is happening right now to, to move, you know, through it in a good way. Right. But also acknowledging that, that truth component of things like the, the lyricism in it, it's talking about things and addressing it to the way that it, that it is right. Talking about how, um, sorry, how Christians weaponized uh, the Bible, right? How they weaponized the Bible and how it was weaponized in, in these, these churches and how it was weaponized in these residential schools. And I want people to be mindful of that, right? I want people to be mindful of that. But I don't want to touch too too far on it because I don't want to give too much away. But uh, that, 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 that is, you know, what I could what I could offer right now in regards to that song. As usual, you are bringing a voice to an issue in your music that we don't really see very often. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to really appreciate that song when it's released. And you said it's coming out on June 30th. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming out on the 30th there. So now you'd also, Oh, (laughs) sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I'm definitely going to send it over, you know? Awesome. Good. Yeah. for sure yeah we can't wait to hear that as well and you'd also mentioned that you have some more music in the works coming out in possibly september can you tell us a little bit about that or keeping oh, it under yeah, wraps for now? <laughs> yeah so um i'm working on an album right now it's called uh passage and uh i think it's pretty relevant to, to give element the plug first you know hey uh, <laughs> right um yeah it's it's been a long time coming this is like been been years like creating it here and there um 
and it's 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 a project that I'm talking about, you know, finding passage through those those hard times, right? I've I've been seeking passage through through things like intergenerational trauma, uh, the experiences that I hold, right? Seeking passage through through you know that that ongoing oppression, like trying to trying to find the happiness in life, you know, and it's it's really touching base on a lot of different avenues of things so people have been getting a preview of it so far right the way reconciliation helpless these are all going to be a part of that project and um, i'm i'm looking forward to to finally you know putting it out there in the world when it's ready we can't wait and it's always a pleasure to chat with you and to just you know follow you along on your journey it's it's really great to chat thank you so much cody for being here today Oh, you got Joe. Appreciate it. And now we're going to check out Cody's newest track, Revolution, right here on Element FM. Thank you, Miigwech. Oh, Miigwech.